Hello and welcome to Match Fishing TV. In the first half of tonight's show, we're covering the World Feeder Championships, the Feeder Masters round on the River Trent, Maver Match this qualifier at Viaduct, the Garbolino Club Angler of the Year qualifier at Gold Valley, and we're looking at the Happy League on the Stainford and Keeper Canal. As usual, I'm joined in the, in the studio by Tom Scully. Hello. And Matt Godfrey. Good evening. So, let's get straight into it. World Feeder Championships in Serbia. I looked at this on Facebook and I've got to say, I didn't think there'd be anybody around for the opening of the claw season. There were so many people <laughs> wearing England shirts in Serbia. They were, um, they were a real buzz for it, weren't they? On Facebook, social media, um, interviews with manager Tommy Fickering. And obviously, it was a really important match because they've won the last two. So if they won this one, it'd be three in a row. Um, the team, Steve Ringer, Phil Ringer, Rob Wooten, Mick Viles, um, Adam Wakelin and Dean Barlow, um, the team that's won the last two, were out there again in Serbia on a canal off um, the River Danube in Novisad. Very strange looking venue yeah. for a feeder match. Proper weird, big concrete slopes yeah. on either bank. Um, I don't think it moved much the venue, talking to a few lads over there, but they've gone into the first day, done the business. Um, they were winning with nine points. And so the indications on, on oh. social media on Saturday night did, did were really, see? really good. I mean, this was this was everybody else needs snookers. Oh, yeah. did you four see sections, yeah. four, four sections, sections they won. Yeah. Unfortunately, as we then found out, the Germans are good at snooker. Yeah, women <laughs> well are as well. I couldn't believe it because that's four of them in contention with being world champion as well, isn't it? Yeah. After mm. first day, four wins in a set, and a fifth for nine points. Germany were two points behind them. Um, on 11, so it were close, and obviously, you know what it's like, it can all massively yeah. change in these world champs. And um, unfortunately, on the second day, it did for them, and Germany came good. England dropped down a little bit, um, and the overall score were Germany winning on 21 points, England second on 34, and Austria team that you don't really hear much about in World Championships, third with 36 points. So two teams, England and Germany, have really dominated the first day, yeah. but nobody has really dominated day two, have they? No. no. Um, and my understanding is it was a bit of a tactical switch. Apparently, I spoke to Glenn Lawrence this morning, we were in the airport on his way back, so we are only a quick conversation, um, but he says, oh, he says it were a brilliant venue, um, very fair, he said that it were different because they were catching a lot of small fish, little skimmers, odd little catfish, um, and on the first day, England targeted skimmers and caught them, did really well. But the second day, they made a tactical change, apparently, and fished for these little catfish. Um, and he said it wasn't right. They should have carried on fishing for skimmers as they did. I don't know why. So, so well, that, that sounds to me as though they've tried to play safe. Yeah. They've got, yeah. you know, a really good start. Let's, you know, try and not make any mistakes. But I think from the sound of it, the Germans have... Had that little bit more of a gamble gone for these skimmers and, yeah, and yeah. just caught up and overtake, overtaken them. But on the individual front as well, they've got a silver medal team wise, but on the indi individual front, it's come good again. Steve yeah. Ring is unbelievable. Absolutely, Absolutely scary. Awesome. Two points again, one in section both days, um, and ended up second individual he, on weight count. He is back. absolutely incredible. I mean, when we had him in here as a studio guest the other week, he won. <laughs> <laughs> that is, so well done, Steve. Hard luck, England. Um, Definitely. I'll tell you what I felt sorry for it all this as well. Um, just the strength and depth in that feeder team is so, oh, so oh. good. But Rob Wooden, bless him, he's been out there, obviously, he was the extra angler who didn't get to fish this year, simply because my understanding is, you know, they couldn't change the winning team from last year, especially as they all did so well in practice. And what tends to happen on these things, of course, is if you go out as a reserve, mm. um, generally, if somebody doesn't do so great on the first day, then the reserve gets to fish the second day. Yeah. But of course, with such a brilliant performance yeah. day one, <laughs> the it's like, change it, how, how can we change this? Um, yeah, Roy Hodgson's going to change things. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, um, no, it, great performance, obviously a great event. As I say, the, the, the size of the backup team just blew me away. Oh, yeah. It was like, I thought they were handing that England shirt yeah. to anybody that wanted one. There were, there were dozens of them. I tell you what, it does make you think as well. This England feed team has done brilliant for three years now. Two golds and a silver. A few individuals. And they do have a lot of men on the bank, don't yeah. they? It's got to make a difference, that. Definitely. I'll tell you what else I like about it, which, um, big thanks to Preston Innovation Sport, the coverage from Preston on Preston's oh, Facebook yeah. and everything like that is awesome. Yeah. It keeps you in touch with what's happening, there's pre-match interviews, there's, even in the run-up to it on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, there's a lot of information on what's happening on the bank. And I think that... Well, they backed it from day one, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. From, from, from the day that this event was you know, envisaged, mm. Preston said, we're up for some of that. Yeah. And obviously, the big in Europe, um, 
it, it's, it is great coverage for them. It's a great brand, lots of great feeder products that they're selling across Holland and mm. you know the other Benelux countries now. Um, so yeah, there is something in it for Preston, but they do do a superb job with that feeder team. It's awesome awesome. stuff. And uh, Tom's obviously doing a pretty good job managing them. Yeah. So yeah, well done lads, I'm going to say. Second and have every conference they'll be up for a medal again next year. Definitely. Okay, um, Garbolino Club Angler of the Year, Gold Valley. Yeah, it was a tough match. Um, the weather, as we know for carp fishing over the last week, really couldn't be much worse, could it? It's no. been hot, the fish have been spawning, and we've had torrential downpours, high pressure. Um, so we did, didn't expect a great match. Um, but as it turned out, it didn't fish too bad. Um, John Light won it at £89.4, he got on a method feeder, did really well. I think he had 10 fish for that, so it's a big old carp. Uh, Linus Neal, who actually won our Venue Knockout Cup qualifier at Gold Valley, he was second, he had £59. Obviously knows the place quite well. He does, he's a local lad. And then Jack Harcourt was third with 58.4. Um, but the interesting thing was, the way we decided to, decided to do qualification on this match was to put the winner of each section through. So even in the hard bits, it was really yeah, nail-biting stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, some of the sections, or, or one of the sections, one was just £8, which is just one car, you know. Yeah. So everybody in that section, it was quite a tense... Still, still has something to go for, yeah. It was quite a tense battle. Um, so it was, it, was a, it was a good match, even though the weights were down, really. Yeah, so no, it's been a really well-attended um, series, the, the Club Angler of the Year, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I mean, that turnout for the South, for the South 92, is actually a record for, for the anglers of the South. I mean, traditionally we have... Midland and Northern. Midland Mountains. is always strong. Yes, yeah. yeah Midland and well, Lindo and Tunnel traditionally are, are very well attended, but it's nice to see some growth in that area, you know, down south because we've had it in the past where there's only been 40 or 50 on that round. So. And the final is? The final's at Barston Lakes in July. So. Excellent. Okay, that's all to fish for. Well done, John Light. Um, Matt, uh, friend of the Feeder Masters at Home Marsh. Yeah, it certainly was. On um, Saturday, I actually went to this myself, Roger Wright. We've had all this rain, haven't we? I yeah. thought River Trent would be up and coloured, exciting match. I thought, oh, men will win on this one, like, big feeder. <laughs> but big you went bench. anyway. Well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, this is things. So I was buzzing, I got me um, energetic music on the way there, and I was thinking about putting two and three dendrobinas on. Got there, boshed it in, fished away, never had a bite. So uh, I didn't do very well myself. However, it was a really exciting match. Um, and no one knew what to expect because it was two and a half foot up this river raging at home marsh obviously it's non-tidal there so normally it's nice steady ounce ounce and a half feeder but everyone was fishing big feeders close in um and it did turn out to be quite an exciting match with big fish dominating um the match was won by a bit of a trent expert paul golding um he fishes it all year round brilliant angler um he had 28 pound one from peg 51 which is actually in muddy bay have you ever yeah. heard of that bit oh yeah I've he'd set there. back and um he'd got a little bit of slack water or quite a lot of slack water and he cast just into the flow like where it was a little yeah. bit steady and everyone in that bay caught a few fish yeah. so the fish had obviously yeah. they, they just take sanctuary, yeah, take yeah. sanctuary. They, they've got that where the flow backs off in muddy bay it just gives them that little bit of respite from yeah. the main flow and although I, I like floody rivers, you know, as far as I'm concerned, when a river's in flood, everything in it's going to feed. But it just gives them that choice. They can go into the mainstream to feed, come back yeah, out of it. Yeah. And, yeah, well, it's interesting in the report, I was talking to him after, he caught a skimmer after about 40 minutes um, on the feeder. So he's thinking, oh, that's a good start, like. Not had another bite for two hours. Then he's up to Barbel and lost it. And then going into the last hour, he's only got this one skimmer in his net, but he's ended up catching three big Barbel last half. Um, so nail biting stuff and exciting for him but it, the good thing about matches like that second place Dean Jacks who's been doing brilliant um, he's done a right one hasn't he he is, he is he's done really well at Southfields on them leagues there. he's only a young lad as well he were, he were on the reserves list with me um, and managed to get on he comes second in the oh, match oh so you were to long spec then Matt yeah I didn't even have a ticket Roger I just turned up and luckily um, three or four people didn't turn up yeah. with the river being in a poor condition so to speak um, and I managed to sneak on, but so did Dean Jacks. He had £13.15 from Peg 18, um, was second on the match and won his qualifying zone. Um, do, like I said, doing brilliant at the minute, travelling with Sean Cameron. Um, he's winning a lot, only a young lad, great to see. Um, and third place, Dave Revel had 13 2 just behind him from Peg 81. So the top three individuals was each in a different zone, so they Good. were the top three, well. well, they were the qualifiers as well. If you let a mediocre Olden pick up a good young un. Just something you said at the start of that, that segment about three dendrobinas and you think that's the, that's the way. They're not as good as lobworms, mate. I'm telling you. You get on a flooded river, 
you get out there, lobworm, tail end of a lobworm, yeah, yeah, even yeah. double lobworm, where you're from, I would imagine there's a lot of Barnsley anglers thinking, what's it on about dendrobenas? They are not anywhere no, near no. as good a bait on a footed river. Get yourself, out out on, get yourself out on that lawn and get yourself some lobworms, mate. They make all the difference. <laughs> you can a head torch. Nick Speed. <laughs> Come out with him and hold his hand on top while he picks up lobworms. It's funny you should say that. Nick Speed went to get some lobworms. He told me a great story. Um, and the place that goes near him is a cemetery, Crook Cemetery. And uh, yeah, he says, I, I was never that brave. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's gone at one o'clock in the morning, and he says there were a load of guys coming back from the pub, and he's there with a head torch on, marigolds in this, <laughs> in, in this churchyard. So you could imagine some of the looks he got. <laughs> oh, I used to get questioned a few times when I was out lob worming at night, but no, they do make honestly hell of a difference. Dendrobenas, they're fine for feed, chop them up, stick them in your ground bag, but when you put some on, put a proper big meat hook on. Fish a lobworm. Absolutely guarantee, mate, it is way better than the Dendrobina. Brilliant. So, Tom, may the match this? Yeah, um, down at Viaduct Fishery. Prolific menu, absolutely fantastic. Um, I knew there'd be a big weight, and there was. Rob Brennan actually won it with £234 from Peg 135. Now, I understand from Facebook that Rob actually had a bad back. So, catching that kind of weight can't have been a, a mean thing. Connor's only many good, no, <laughs> no, and particularly not picking his keep nets out at the end. But um, yeah, he won we with £234. Some way in front of Miles Levy was second. He had 155 15 from peg 123. And the lad who really is standing out in terms of his consistency but still hasn't been lucky enough to qualify is young Sam Collett in third. He's only 17, I think, Sam. He's had 149.5 from peg 64. But I think he's framed now in about five or six of these matches this year so far. He yeah. is so consistent in his Yeah, he's a lovely yeah. lad, dead committed to his fishing, does loads of prep, travels all over the country, and he's going to go far anyway. I'm sure he'll get in that final. Definitely. I'm just I'm just thinking about Rob with this bad back. I can imagine him going to the <laughs> doctors, can't you? I've done my back. Oh, you're Coleman. No, I'm a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> so, but apparently, no, he's caught some real big fish on, uh, on meat down the edge. Um, it, it was a good peg, and... Um, talking to the, the fishery manager this morning, he sort of said that obviously because they'd only got 80 odd people on the mats, they were able to peg it quite generously around the lake. Yeah. So Rob's had a bit of room and uh, really made the most of it. Yeah. But the thing I do want to just mention briefly about the match this, which I quite don't quite know where I stand on it as yet, but there's certainly been some strong opinions expressed on Facebook. And that's the change of the venue for the final. It was so, so they have now made an announcement. We hinted last week yep. that we thought there might be something going on. Yeah, there's been an official announcement. The final for this year's event will be held at Hayfield Lakes in Doncaster. Wow, OK, that's a big call. Mm. Well, I think most of the people who are upset about it are upset because they bought tickets on the proviso that the final would be at Larford, which you can understand. You know, Local anglers to Larford in particular, where there's been several qualifiers, it's their home water. They've, they've, spent, 70 quid, on, yeah. they've spent 70 quid a ticket. It's not cheap to qualify for a final at Larford. Yeah. And for it to be moved, I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? I think, like you said, I spoke to Simon Fry, who were obviously the first person to qualify, um, and the first qualifier at the Glebe. And he, he says, oh, you know, he says, I don't really know what to think. I, I fish Larford a lot. I know it quite well. I put a lot of effort into fishing there, and now it's kind of wasted because... So it sounds to me as though it's kind of mixed feelings. Really. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not, you know, there's, there's not been an awful lot of slating of it, but it's... I think most people probably guessed that something was coming because there mm. have been management changes at Maver. Yeah. I suspect they've got something to do with it. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're through now, so you're going to be going home rather than going down south. That's it. I can stop at my mum's house and have a cook dinner every now and then while I practice it. <laughs> it's, it's, odds have just sort of been short. <laughs> Matt can have a proper dinner. So, so okay, so Hayfield. Yeah, I mean, I think the fishing will be prolific in areas. It's still going to be a pegging match, I think. You know, I, I remember from the old Fisher Mania finals, it, it really is an all or nothing venue, isn't it, for a lot of the anglers? Yeah. You sort of. If you have a nice margin or if you have a feature, you know, like that, you're going to catch a lot of fish. We still don't know what lakes it's going to be on, do we? We don't know whether it's going to be on the big lake or whether it's going to be split over big Adams or little Adams. Um, but yeah. Something different, new, a little bit of excitement there. I'm but, looking forward to Yeah, that. I mean, personally, as far as pegging goes, I'd rather you're all on the same lake. Yeah. You know, if you're fishing a, a, a final like that, I at least want to know that if that crap over there is catching, at least I'm in the same lake and I've got access to the same fish as I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really don't like the idea of a prestige match like that. Very limited pegs mm. being on split venues yeah. because suddenly you can be draw within five minutes of the match start and you can think, I'm wasting my time here. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine they'll just peg one bank of the big lake. That's how I think I do. Ah, that's what they'll do. And then you can have spectators on the other bank and you can see. You know, we'll have to cut the island down now, won't we? I'll cut the trees on the island. Yeah. 
So all you all you southern lads that have uh, been practicing for Mabel Arthur, you need to get your passports out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the Happy League, Kago's Happy League on the Stanford and Kibley Canal, Matt. Yeah, we haven't mentioned this league yet, but it's a brilliant one up north, really, really popular. 72 anglers were on the match yesterday on the Stanford. Um, it was won by Browning Osset man, Ben Taylor, um, another young angler, only 20 odd years of age. He had 6 kilo, 470, drew peg 192, which is just on the edge of the boats um, at top end at Canal. And he says the canal's really weedy, because I only ever fished there in the winter, so there's never any weed around. But he said this time he could only fish 30 metres because there were that much weed. So he fed a couple of balls of fish meal ground bait there um, just to catch big fish, skimmers, bream. A couple of red worms on hook and sat holding his bait dead still. Caught five big skimmers quite early on. Um, some of them up to like two pounds. And then um, when bites have dried up, he's caught some small fish shorter. Yeah, um, three pound a little fish. So so shows though, them fish are still in that canal this time of year. We sometimes say, oh, they all migrate out in the summer. But there's obviously still a lot of fish there. He and Exley were second, five kilo, eight hundred. Um, you were on the marina mouth, I think. Caught them casters on long pole, um, and Graham top were third with 4 kilo 520. Good weight, so. Yeah, yeah. it's been a decent canal match, that has. Really good. Um, but it's a really good league, that one. I was speaking to Ben on phone this morning, and they actually pay teams on the day as well. Okay. And there aren't really many events like that no, nowadays. No, that's great. That's that really good yeah, to fish se- one, 72 it? anglers, um, and they pay teams on the day, individuals. That's, that's terrific. Nobody's going to you know, take an early bath on that basis, are they? No, 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 of course not. No, it's interesting how they've done it. Um, I'm not sure exactly what out of the situation is now, in the last couple of years, but I know traditionally, Barnsley anglers are allowed to fish it, aren't they? Because you're yeah. the dominant team in that area. So they encourage the anglers to fish, but they fish for other teams. So they, okay. they spread out through the league rather than... So they don't tell them when it's on. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do, they do. But it's, it's good because you have, end up then with some of your stronger anglers. Would, H- if helping out some of the weaker yeah. anglers to, to go for the team. Yeah. Definitely. Excellent. Osset won on the day, by the way. They've won the first two rounds of that Browning Osset. So um, I spoke to Benny. They're not dark horses anymore, no. are they? He says we're going to try and win every round. Well, best of luck to him for that. OK, we're going to take a short break. And uh, in the second half of the show, we will have uh, a studio guest. Welcome back, and in the second half of the show, we're going to be talking about the opening weekend on the Evesham qualifiers, um, we'll be discussing the Fishermania round at Partridge Lakes, and the, we've got quite a bit on the uh, Daiwa Pole Fishing Masters at Tunnel Bar. Um, gents, Evesham, good it's turnouts. Brilliant turnouts, but um, Diane Raffaella runs the matches, um, she always says she'll take 87 names, because it's 87 pegs, and expect a few not to turn up. On Saturday, 86 turned up. So there was just wow. one spare pair <laughs> on the whole match then. But what a brilliant match. Yeah. Um, there was some extra water on the river, a little bit of colour. And uh, it fished. It's nuts off, really, to be fair. I um, saw Paul Newell on Facebook talking about, uh, I think he was going to attend both days. So. Yeah, um, he was one of the later ones to turn up. We I was going to say, he hadn't got a ticket as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware. I think he turned up once right. a week. No, we couldn't. We, couldn't, we were going to take, take his peg out, but then he came right at the last minute, bless him. But um, no, it was good to see him back on the river. But... Um, it fished really, really well. The bream fed, there was a bit of extra colour. Uh, Chris Smith won it off peg one uh, from Census Snowbag. That's some big bream. I think he had 10 for £48. Wow. Um, he caught on ground bait feeder. He actually, I was speaking to him after, and he lost his first fish. And as you can imagine, when you do that, you're cursing, aren't you? Because you, normally you don't need many of them. <laughs> <at> the <laughs> well, normally one of them's enough, isn't it? Or two, at the most, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but he lost his first one, but then he's caught steady. He's, he's a great angler, Chris. I've seen him at Evesham a lot, and he's done, done really yeah, well. Yeah. 
Um, second on the peg next to him was Ed Warren. He caught 18-4. He actually caught on a flat float, Ed did. Uh, feeding chop worm. Um, and third was Jim Brockie of WB Clark. He's caught some chub on a maggot feeder from peg 36. Um, but as you say, you know, the nice thing about Evesham, you're never out of it. There's a lot of fish like that in the river, but it's only really when there's this colouring that they're feeding any... any oh, there. it's solid with fish. You know, I mean, when we run the Evesham Festival and I stay down there during the week, we rent a house on the side of the river. It's mm. cheaper than putting the whole crew up in a hotel. So we rent a cottage, which is right next to the river. And in areas that you don't want to draw in the matches, there's fish topping everywhere yeah, at night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of fish in it. Right, so you could see Bream rolling where I was even. I was on peg 11 and like just looking down to the right, down towards the bridge. You could see the odd one like, oh, I want to go. You never think you're out of it, do you? You sit there yeah. and there's always a chance you could get that yeah, bite. Yeah. And oh, especially on a flood river. Absolutely. I mean, yesterday, there was, uh, on Saturday, sorry, there was barbel caught. There was a barbel off about peg 15, I think. Uh, there was a carp caught in the 60s. There was a carp caught yesterday as well. So, everything's fed. It's been, uh, it's been hard for a lot, as each is, but a good match. Um, the witch over? Dave Harris won that. Um, Dave's one of them anglers, isn't he? He wins some matches at each and many days. He does. And what he does, um, it sounds simple, but there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. He basically fishes bomb and lobworm. Chucks it out. Lobworms. See, Matt? Lobworms. Chucks bomb and lobworms, and it loose feeds lobworms as well. Um, but there's quite a lot to it. I think we're going to have to do a feature with them. They're going to make a right mess when you catapulting <laughs> them out and doing these things. Imagine they do. if they made They're a little... Imagine if they made a little noise as they went through air. Wee! That, they do have a computer game, not the worms are getting. Yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, it loose feeds them and, and fishes some strongly. I think he said he fishes £10 gold pro straight through or something. Oh you know, Size 8 up. He, uh, he's, a, he's a, as you call it, a proper angler, as he said. Like, when he gets them on, they're not coming, they're not yeah. coming off. We had a £10 barbell off peg four. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't peg four the one that all the locals try and get you to take out on the festival? It is. There it is. Are. And I've already, this year, from sending out the invitations, I've already had appeals not to put peg four in. Oh. Never. There's your evidence. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, and the thing about Evesham, I, I understand that peg four is difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, one or two, great. Three and four, not so great. Go on to five and you're on, on what I would call the normal match room. I'll state now, here and now, why I put peg four in and peg three in. As far as I'm concerned, if you're going to start the match at peg one, the most important people on the bank are the spectators. And they don't want to see two anglers on pegs one and two, and then a three quarters, you know, well, not mm. three quarters of a mile, but... 200 yard walk to get to the rest of the match length. You're out of it. So that's the reason I use it. And ever since somebody won it, I'll pay for it. <laughs> I actually won a pint um, two or three years ago. Sam Wildsmith had a, a decent weight. I think I had a bet that sort of, on a bloodworm match, somebody would have over five pounds yeah. on peg four. No, 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 I'll take that bet. So that won me a pint. No, it's, yeah. um, no, it's difficult. Absolutely. I know it's a difficult peg. Well, isn't it, Evesham, though? There's no easy, easy pegs at Evesham, is there? Well, uh, there are some that are easier than peg four. But, <laughs> but no, um, you, you've got to set your stall out differently on it. Yeah. Definitely. Second and third, we're from peg 35 and 36 again, which is where the, um, the Watch Raven, which is the river obviously that goes to Evesham, meets with the River Isborne. It's a yeah, peg it's opposite and just below it. Yeah. And again, they've caught some chub there. Um, maggot feeds As they always do when there's rain on. You know, mm. you get some rainwater, that flood coming down the Isborne, it just tends to push the, the chub back off of it come into the main river and then when the colour drops out they go back into the Isbourne and, and, and they're very too, yes. uh, difficult to, yeah, to catch yeah. them. So that was Alan, Alan Stevens for Ulster Sports. He was second. He had £10.2 from 35. And Damien Green of Maver Image, third, with £9.8. So, yeah, they did well. No, it's um, two good qualifiers, two decent turnouts um, in difficult conditions. And just to say as well, um, Diane Raphael has said that for the next couple of weeks there are a few spaces available. Now. There's been a few people cancel off. Um, so there are... Gaps available. If anybody wants to fish, use the online booking system at the Hampton Ferry website and you'll be able to book on through that. Yeah, and um, she runs a great match, does brilliant breakfast. Even if, you, mm. even if the breakfast is the best part of the day, it's worth going. Bread pudding's not bad after that, yeah. that's quite nice. No, I never tend to stay around for that. I'd have a pint and then go home. But oh no, I have some bread pudding <laughs> next time. It's lovely. Okay. Um, Fishermania qualifier at Partridge. Yep, it were a big one, Rog. Two qualifiers going through from this one and two very popular characters in match fishing as well. Um, ben Fisk won the match with £148.6. He caught on Caster's Shallow, a method that's dominating that venue at the moment. Um, and second place was Mr Oosh himself, Andy May, who had 117.8. Um, and again, he caught on Caster's Shallow. Um, but interesting that Andy's got through because he's really... Um, well, it goes to Cudmore, mm. where the semi-final and the final are all the time. And I reckon if you put a 
board of odds up, he'd be... Uh, the I'll best be having bet. a bet. That's Definitely. my bet. Definitely. He's got to get through the semi-final first. I yeah, mean, OK, yeah. we think he probably would, but... He does a lot of coaching there. He's yeah. In the past, he's won loads and loads He's going to stop there. coaching now. He's not going to coach for the rest <laughs> of the season. Not telling anybody anything from now on. But now, and interestingly, it was John Arthur was third on the match. I noticed he had £116 something. So he just, just missed out. Oh, he's been John. close on a few now, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's there or thereabouts. He's, yeah. In all fairness, he had a couple of seasons of winning every single thing he entered. So yeah. um, I'm just about, I was just about At least he's a nearly man at the moment. I mean, it's better to be, you know... There's an awful lot of people that would love to be in here. Yeah, of course yeah. there are. I was just about to say John Arthur's been really unlucky at the moment, but then I thought, no, I can't say that. I've been, everybody <laughs> said John Arthur's been unlucky. Oh, but now, interestingly, there was a few no-shows, and it only a handful, I think, this time. But Again? Think, yeah, but only a handful, but um, you wouldn't expect it. Partridge, a popular venue, on a Saturday qualifier. Mm, and Andy May actually said that there were quite a few no-shows, and yeah, yeah. that gave him and Ben some room. That, that's, you know, that helped them yeah. sort of... When they said Ben in particular, and Andy May were quick to say that the Ben Fisk's peg is not a good peg. Brilliant. I, just don't, I just don't get these no shows. I haven't got enough money to spend. How much is a ticket? 50 quid? 30 quid. 30 quid. I've not got enough money to spend 30 quid and then not bother going. No. 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 Really well, James, James Demp was 20 odd on the reserve list, and he was the first one to get on in the reserve, so he were plenty of time. So, well done, Ben. Well done, Andy. Um, keep an eye out for you both in the, uh, in the semi final. Um, okay, now I mentioned uh, when we came back from the break that we've got uh, a special studio guest for the last part of the show. Um, and because we've only got three chairs that match, we're going to get rid of Matt now. Oh. And it's unfortunate, Matt can go and make another oh. cup of tea. But we're going to be joined by Jordan Holloway. Um, Jordan really tore some trees up last week on the Daiwa Pole Fishing Masters. Um, Matt, you go and get the, uh, the brews in. See you later, chaps. And uh, we'll see you back with Jordan in a sec. <clears throat> So, we're joined by Jordan Holloway, and I understand, Jordan, you were 17 yesterday, yeah, yeah. but you've not brought any cakes. No. You've not told him the rules, Tom. <laughs> no, no, it's quite a pop. He hasn't made a cup of tea out. He's been in the office all morning, he made a cup of tea yet, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> now, a number of reasons, Jordan's obviously a class act anyway, but you um, did particularly well last week on the Dower Poppers and Masters. Uh, I won the last two days, individually. That is some going for somebody that was only 17 yesterday. Yeah, yeah. To, to, be, to be honest, it was a remarkable performance, and that's one of the reasons I've asked Jordan to come in. I mean, the two pegs he had um, you know, were, were reasonable pegs, but to, catch the, weight, pegs. to catch the weights that you mm. caught, mate, and, you know, £150 pound on the second day, £140 pound on the... £150 pound on the third day, £140 pound on the second day, should I say. Mm. Um, he tore it apart, and, you know, we've got the best F1 anglers in the country on that match, really, so... Um, you're unbelievable. Thank Just you. talk us about your court. I've caught all of them on Caster's Shadow. On the first day it was a bit harder and I've had to follow them out and fish. I've only fished like a foot deep but I've had to keep following them out and everything. They weren't just there. But on the second day on Jenny's I fished six metres with Caster's again and they've just been there all day, haven't they? Definitely. I mean, the thing I like, Roger, I mean, there's a lot of people in fishing who are what I call sheep who follow certain trends and you can see it walking around yeah. like that. People who sort of go through the motions and copy other animals. Jordan, he was his floats that his dad makes. He fishes mm. in such his own style, it's unbelievable. You have made floats that your dad mm. makes for you in the garage. Um, you fish quite heavy, don't you? Which a lot of anglers yeah. don't do. Um, just, just great. Absolutely brilliant. That's a spectacular couple of wins. I mean, obviously, first day was a lot harder, or a lot harder for you. Um, that second day that you talk about, that, that you've won with 150... 143. 143. 143. Mm. That, the rain that day, I saw some Facebook footage of it. That was big. It was, it was horrendous. That was a day. I'm, I'm assuming you wore a steel hat, you know, tin mm. helmet, because, I mean, it was coming down something you could awful. Watch, you could watch it come across the lake, like, and you just get ready for it. It was horrible. Ooh. Yeah, it was like bullets coming down, straight down. I'll tell you the interesting thing, though. Normally, in my experience, when that happens, if you're catching shallow, it stops. You don't normally catch shallow anymore. Really. Yeah. You said you had your best run, didn't you? I had about ten fish while that rain was really heavy. It was... It was only there for about four minutes, really, really heavy. I caught, caught about ten fish in it. Okay, it's so well done, Jordan. Yeah, incredible. Let's talk about the festival itself. Who, who won that? Well, the reigning champion, Andy Bennett. The man is a machine. He's unstoppable. Um, he won it with perfect score, three section wins. Um, but the nail-biting thing, and I think that had Matt and I checking our results board very closely at the end, was he won it by just two ounces on weight difference from Death Ship. 
So Des has had three section wins as well. Des has had three section wins and a weight of three hundred pound four ounce. And I'm assuming that Des has checked the weight. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy Bennett had a weight of three hundred pound six ounce. But the nice thing was, um, at the end when we did the results, Andy Bennett didn't think he'd won. He worked the weights out of his head, and he got Des down as being in front. And it was his birthday on that day. And uh, when he found out, all around, then. yeah, he was but always over for Des. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, even Des were quite happy. He, must, he walked home with a couple of grand in his pocket, mm. didn't he? So he didn't look too disappointed. He didn't walk home with a big, with a new polo, did he? No, no, he didn't walk home with that. Andy Bennett's had one of them each year off us now, so he's. Uh, but to watch him, just incredible. And one of the things um, that I'm particularly proud of about this event is the footage we've got. We're putting together an hour-long um, video for uh, Daiwa. Just on the event. Just on the event, and a 50-page digital magazine, which will be available free for people to view. So we'll keep you posted on when that will be available. But there's loads of tips in there. I certainly learned a lot just walking around, you know. And at the end of the festival, Tom Scully caught up with Jordan and the winner, Andy Bennett. Well, that's it, folks. The end of another Dyer Pole Fishing Masters Festival. Now, there's been two men who've really stood out in this event for me. And I'm going to start with you, Jordan. 16 years of old, the youngest angler here. You've won two matches outright. Yeah. How much money have you won? £2,600. Blink it. And what are you going to do with that? I'm 17 next week, so I need to book some driving lessons and maybe get a car. But you've won two of the matches outright as well, haven't you? Mm. Massive weight. What do you think, Andy? Awesome. He's done well, hasn't he? That's 16 year old. He is. And the other man who stole the show yet again, the reigning champions, come back this year and defended his title. He's won the event by just two ounces from Dead Shit. Andy, yeah. how does it feel? I'm over the moon, mate. Two yeah. ounces. I thought, I thought I was second, but. Started it off with two hours, so can't <laughs> Brilliant, mate. You fished absolutely awesomely as always. And uh, we've got you know, the, the, the surprising thing from our point of view is alongside all the fishing, Andy's helped us put together a brilliant digital magazine over these last few days, along with a lot of the other star anglers here. Um, and that'll be available um, beginning of July. You'll be able to download that. It's going to be a 50 page um, digital magazine and an hour long video all about this event. And our guys like these have, uh, have done so well. So we can look forward to that beginning of July. OK, well, Jordan, thanks very much for coming in. Um, and that's us done for a week. And we shall see you again next week, hopefully, when England are through to the, what will it be by then, quarterfinals I don't, I don't of Euro 2016. It. It's looking all right at the minute. Yeah. Now that you've got Jamie Vardy playing. <laughs> Cheers.